G'day mates, Remy here with a Shadowrun 5th edition tutorial on what hosts are, what they do and how they interact with your decker during runs. And Technomancer, can't forget those little special for sunflowers. Now this is going to go into what a host actually does, and the, uh, mechanically that is, not the fluff around it, and how it functions, not the exact dice rolls involved. I will however give the page numbers to anything such as the uh, matrix actions when I reference them. Now, normally I just wait for Mr. Complex Action to make a tutorial on hosts, but since I've so far incorrectly explained it to my players around four or so times, I figure I'm gonna have to make a definite definition and figure it all out. And since I've done so much research into bloody things, I figure I'll help out the rest of you along the way. So, uh, for other tutorials, go look at this guy, little YouTube editing link here, Will. He makes understanding rules as easy as cutting through bloody soy butter with a die-coated monoblade. And uh, I think that's all the preamble done, good. Let's uh, figure out how many digibullets it takes to hack the president. So, turn your attention to the convenient whiteboard as we tell the tale of Mr. Alpha and Mrs. Bravo. Alpha and Bravo are two deckers who both get hired by Mr. Johnson to hit their building of convenient examples. They both need to get inside of the building, find a terminal, and steal all the valuable data inside of it. Now, Alpha and Bravo have different techniques of hacking. Mr. Alpha likes to sit in the matrix at his home, hours away, while Miss Bravo likes to hack from inside the building. They both arrive in person and in the matrix, and are both confronted by a building. In the matrix, Alpha sees the host, and in meat space, Bravo sees an actual building, surprisingly enough. Uh, this building has three devices inside of it. A camera on the outside, a gun turret in the middle, and the prize guarded in the very depths of the facility, the terminal. All of these are slaved to the host, and therefore gain the host's stats for resisting hacking attempts. However, hackers that manage to mark these devices will be able to gain a mark on the host itself, as it is the master of the slaved devices. However, they both first decide to hack a random comlink in the street. Alpha can see and hack it because it's on the normal matrix grid, but Alpha has to deal with the noise from distance. This is because he is not on the same host as that comlink, and is uh, situated his house hours away. He's in Sydney, let's say. Bravo also can see and hack the comlink, but doesn't suffer noise because she's literally next to it in the street. Uh, under 100 meters, I believe, is the limit. This is the normal state of affairs when a device is not attached to a host. And as a note, this both applies when the device is wireless or just connected to the matrix through, say, uh, a wired link, but it doesn't go through a host. So a terminal that doesn't connect to a host can also be hacked in the same way as that comlink I described. So. After that, they both decide to shut down the camera out front. We're going to ignore the fact that Alpha can just skip past the camera and the gun turret and go straight for the terminal for tutorial reasons. So Alpha walks over and tries to hack the camera, only to find out it doesn't exist. That's right, because the camera is inside of the host in the matrix, it doesn't exist outside of the host. This is because Mr. Joe's security spider turned off the camera's wireless features, meaning the only connection to the camera is through the host. Alpha therefore has to hack the host to hack the camera. Alpha rolls for either a brute force or hack on the fly to gain a mark on the host, which the host defends against using its host rating plus host firewall. So it's usually a fairly hard task. Alpha then uses enter slash exit host action to enter the host. These rules can be found on page 238 onwards in the Shadowrun 5th edition core rulebook, hereon referred to as SR5. Alpha steps inside of the building in the Matrix and finds himself in a wonderfully large room. Now, he looks around and sees the camera, which is not running silent. Alpha walks over and uses his preferred method of hacking the camera, whatever that may be. Now, because Alpha is inside of the host, he is directly connected to devices that are slaved to it. This means that Alpha can hack the camera, and the camera resists with its device rating times 2 rather than the host's stats, and Alpha will suffer no noise penalties despite being far away. Alpha has now hacked the camera and can destroy it, turn it off, or any other myriad of things he would want to do. We cut back to Bravo in the real world who fires up her AR and can suddenly see the various devices in the Matrix and can even fly her persona around inside of it like a remote controlled person, but she is focused on the cameras. Bravo realises she can't see the camera's icon and that they're not running silent. This is because the wireless in the cameras is turned off and they're inside of the host that, out that Bravo is outside of, so she cannot access them. So instead, Bravo saunters up to the cameras and just plugs in a data cable. This allows her to directly connect to the camera and ignore the host stats in favour of hacking the camera directly. Now, when Bravo scores a mark on this camera, she also gets one on the host because it's slaved to the host. Bravo hacks through the camera's basic defences and then she can do whatever she wants to the camera. So, 
They've both just dealt with the camera in their own way, but we'll go over exactly what this means for hosts in the end. Next, Alpha steps up to the gun turret. He then realises he can't actually see the gun turret because it's running silent. He makes a matrix perception action, the uh, rules for that are on page 241 of SR5, against the gun turret, which doesn't benefit from the host statistics because it is uh, connected directly to Alpha. Once Alpha finds the hidden gun turret, he is once again free to hack it directly and do whatever he wants to it. Bravo, however, is inside of the building now and is hiding around a corner while the gun turret tries to shoot her. She realises her best hope is just to hack the turret and make it stop. This time, however, when she searches for the gun turret, she's lucky. Mr. Joe Spider forgot to turn the wireless off on the gun turret, and even though the gun turret is running silent, once Bravo detects it using a matrix, matrix perception action, she can hack it from outside of the host. This is because when a device is wireless, it always appears in the matrix, overlaid in the place it would be in real life. Now, for Bravo to actually find the gun turret, she must face the host's rating and sleaze, and must face the host's rating and firewall to hack it. This is because the gun turret is slave to the host, and Bravo is not directly connected to the gun turret. If the gun turret was not slave to the host, Bravo would find it much easier to hack. But she succeeds anyway, thanks to the dice god Nuffle, and shuts down the gun turret. Finally, they both walk over to the terminal. Alpha in the Matrix, and Bravo in real life. Now, Alpha would not, no matter how hard he tried, be able to see this terminal if he was outside of the host. This is because the terminal, like the camera out front, is not wireless and it has a wired connection going through the host. This means that the only way for Bravo to affect the terminal is to plug into it directly. Once again, Bravo is directly connected and as such does not have to deal with the host statistics. Alpha, who is inside of the host, can simply hack the terminal as if it was any other device in the matrix and is also directly connected. But conveniently timed disaster strikes. Both Alpha and Bravo fail their hack on the fly actions meaning that according to the rules for failed illegal actions on page 231 of SR5, the target gets a mark on the hacker. In Alpha's case, the terminal immediately alerts the host, which begins launching Intrusion Countermeasures, or ICE. These programs are scary beasts designed to beat the hackers out of the host in the same way guards come when the alarm is pulled. But for Bravo, the terminal gains a mark and is aware that it is being hacked, but she's not in the host, so nothing happens. In fact, the only threat that Bravo faces is her increasing Overwatch score. Alpha also has an Overwatch score, but it has a different result when he reaches Convergence. So, back to the terminal. Alpha realises he only has moments before the ice overwhelm him and as such hacks the terminal again and steals all of that lovely pay data before jacking out of the Matrix. Alpha is now scot-free. Bravo hacks the terminal again and succeeds, stealing her share of the data and jacking out the Matrix to walk back out the front door and go home. Now, that was a very long and very back and forth story, quite boring by most standards, but the important part of that story is that it covered everything that a host actually does for you or your players mechanically. The comlink was just to show the natural state of the Matrix. The first situation the two deckers encountered was that devices that are not wireless and that are placed inside of the host cannot be accessed from outside of a host via the Matrix. The only way to access them is to plug into them directly or hack the host, then hack them. This is the reason why there wasn't a Charlie hacker who hacked from the Matrix but didn't enter the host. There would be two issues with Charlie, the first being that they would have to deal with noise the whole time, and that for the camera and terminal, they would simply be unable completely to hack them. There is simply no way to reach them. The direct connection hacking also covers why there is not just one mega host with a thousand firewall that every single corp ties all of its devices to. This is because if there is not a physical guard guarding that comlink, camera, or even gun, a hacker can just directly connect to it to get around the firewall and also get a mark on the host. This means that some corps won't even slave their guard's guns to a valuable host, as they can always be shot or knocked out and then taken. The second trial was that of the gun turret, and showed what happens when you leave wireless on. Even though the gun turret was running silent to hide from those evil hackers, because the wireless was left on, it could be hacked from outside of the host. Bravo hacked it from the grid, and Alpha could have even left the host and hacked it from the grid, but chose to stay inside of the host. This is because any device with a wireless capability that is turned on, be it gun or even cyberware, has an overlaid matrix icon like a virtual sticker. If you were looking at a wireless gun in AR, you would see both the real gun in meat space and the matrix version in the matrix, which may be a gun or a sword, something of the like. Now, sometimes you want to leave your wireless on, like for guns that give bonuses to having it on. This is where host's protection come in. 
In much the same way a decker of a Shadowrunning team will slave his team's guns and comlinks to his deck, the police slave their guns to a host so that when the hacker tries to hack them wirelessly, the hacker has to deal with the host statistics rather than the gun's rating. Bravo had to deal with this for the gun turret. Alpha, however, was able to hack it directly thanks to already being inside of the host. That is one of the downsides to slaving all of your guns to a host. Lastly, the terminal, in which the main point of host is revealed. So while Bravo had a harder time hacking in general, and had to hack both the camera and the terminal directly thanks to them not being in the normal matrix grid, she did not have to deal with the dangers a host brings. A host, when it is aware it's being hacked, deploys ice that can brick your deck or even kill you. Spiders are also a threat, the legal decker that corpse hired to fight other illegal deckers for them. This meant that Alpha, while he had an easier time hacking and was able to hack things from a great distance with zero noise, had to deal with the dangers a host brought. And so the next time you're hitting a corporate building, remember that a host is a choice. Do you want to deal with more direct danger, but the devices you are hacking have less defense against you, or do you want to not have to worry about ice coming to kill you and just deal with the buff defenses of the devices? So that is what a host is. I probably could have said it in less words, but I wanted to run through a scenario that actually tests the rules of the host so that others can understand and actually run them correctly. Or rather, correctly as I believe them, the book to describe them. If you want your host to actually be magical lands that deckers get to frolic in by answering three questions to the gatekeeper, go right ahead, it's your game. But as for me and my game, which can be watched by pressing that little little button there, I am, however, legally obligated to inform you that the first few weeks of our play involved numerous mistakes and far too much pink mohawking, but I'd like to say with the last few weeks, things have definitely improved. <coughs> but enough advertising like a shameless whore. If you think I'm a bloody moron, or I've com got it completely all wrong, please do tell me in the comments here or on Reddit, so that I can either fix this by, I don't know, sticking a little thing over going, I was a dumbass here, here's the right rule or something. Or, if it's completely wrong, scrapping it and re-uploading it. For now, I'm off to go edit this awful pile of me scrubbing at a whiteboard for approximately 39 hours into something watchable. Good night, mates.